Hello guys, how are we going? So welcome to the second video today. Um, we're going to be talking to Stephen Saunders in a second. So we're just waiting for Steve to to log in, to everyone to join us, then we'll, we'll get going. Um, it's been a bit weird today, so every time I start um, Instagram Live, it's been kind of playing up a little bit. Let's hope it's working this time around. If not, I have to go and start again. Wait. Which there he is. All right. Invite. Ten. Wait for Steve to accept the request and we'll get talking. Yo, how are we going? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. How's, how's things? How's life in lockdown for you? Yeah, good, man. It's like, it's like normal. <laughs> Fair uh -huh. enough, just, just chilling out. Nice, nice. Yeah, man. So thanks for joining us. That's been, it's been pretty cool doing these kind of videos. Just, just talking to to friends to see what they, what you guys been up to, and and kind of sharing uh, our experience in the industry. And people seem to love it, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, cool, man. Thanks, okay. thanks for doing that. Yeah, so good, man. So, Steve, you want to give a a quick intro of yourself? Obviously, uh, to the guys who just know who you are, what kind of stuff you do. Uh, yeah, so um, I have been working in the film industry for oh, it's about 20 years now, actually. Jeez. Um, started up in, in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, worked on a lot of low-budget straight-to-video sequel stuff yeah, for yeah. a number of years. Um, and then got the opportunity to come to New Zealand uh, to work on The Hobbit, which I campaigned for very hard yep. and managed to come up with. Uh, so I've been here for 10 years now, working in all sorts of things. And um, more recently, uh, you know, you interviewed Joaquin. We have got our own shop, uh, workshop now. Um, and I've gone completely freelance. So I've been doing a lot of remote work uh, as a uh, character modeler and concept artist and just whatever whatever work comes up. Yeah, man. So, yeah. So obviously, you you start off doing like actual physical sculpting, then now you kind of moved on to the yeah, digital that's, side. That's been the big change in the last uh, say four years or so. Gone yeah. from complete luddite. Yeah. Um, Doing everything by hand as yeah. old school as possible yeah. to yeah. doing virtually everything digitally now. Yeah. And it's it, um, industry pressure. That's, that's where all the work has gone. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't regret it. I, yeah. I do enjoy the work. Um, I find, um, I find I have to still throw a thing on the 3D printer every now and then just to yep, yep. see a physical thing come up and give it yeah, a yeah. quick I call it my five five hundred paint job because I'm a terrible painter. So uh, you got, you, I'm sure you'll I'm have, sure you'll conquer that too man. <laughs> 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 I have the theory that if you if you paint something really quickly and you don't have a lot of control over it, yep. it's inevitably gonna turn out interesting if not great. Yep. Yep, and yep, I'm more yep. interested in interesting anyway. Yeah that's good. I mean like, I see like so when so you started doing that for the last what couple of years now, eh? So it must be so so when was that like that that little click that you realised, oh, I better jump onto the computer. Mm -hmm. which project was that? Uh, it's been coming for a while. I think Blade Runner was probably the moment where uh in order to do the miniatures to the extent and complexity that we needed to do it. Yeah. We were essentially building a miniature city. I mean there yeah. were yeah. Uh, over a hundred buildings eventually. Yeah. Um, and we had to rely heavily. Oh, and they had to match the previs, the yep. previsualized um, yep. sequence pretty much exactly. So we had to do it all in 3D and then yeah. bring it into the physical world. And um, as one of the art directors on that, I found, you know, you can only really make um, informed. Yeah. Create decisions if you know the process really well. Yeah. 
uh, which I didn't know it as well at the time. Yeah. To the frustration of some, I'm sure. <laughs> um, yeah. And, you know, the best way to do it is to learn it yourself. Um, we, you know, we were fortunate enough to get some recognition for our work at the Visual Effects yeah, man. Award. Yeah. For, for that, what was that, 2018 or 17, I think? Yeah. And um, it's all good and well having this this recognition for your work, but you could be a really good miniature visual effects maker. But if there's no miniature visual effects work out yeah. there, yeah. Uh, then... Um, <laughs> He's sort of the king of the of the beggars. Yeah, <laughs> if there's no work opportunities, then it doesn't yeah. matter yeah. Uh, whether you are, are the best um, or not. Work. So, um, so you know, as it, as it's always been, you have to adjust and adapt to what yeah. the where the work is. And uh, yeah. I also get uh, I don't like if my career or my learning curve is stagnant. Yeah. So. Uh, it made sense to jump to digital and learn that really yeah. much from scratch. Not really, because, um, you know, the, the art and the, the classical training is yeah. uh, through. You just need to adjust. But I'm learning all day, every day. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's, that's, um, the, that's the I fun part about technology. There's one thing I've been saying uh, more than ever, yeah. more than anything else this year at work is I wish the thing I'm doing right now for work, yeah. I wish this wasn't the first time I'm doing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> but, but, but that's uh, how we roll, though, man. We kind of learn as we go. We always, like, you know, learn as we need yeah, it. Yeah, I feel like it's really heated up the last, the last few years for me. Yeah, yeah. It's um, almost, yeah. I guess that's the way the industry kind of goes now, always pushing that the new boundary. So you have to like, you kind of have to learn the new things to make the new project. I guess I have to admit I'm my own worst enemy. I mean, oh. I did two or three collectibles in ZBrush and then I yeah. started going, oh, I'm not really learning so much anymore. I have to yeah. throw a spanner in the wheel spoke and figure out yeah. how to start over again. Oh, great. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I keep, I keep doing that. Yeah, yeah. Come because you start doing. Obviously, you came into ho to the Hobbit doing not sculpting like, well, markets and and dwarf mm. appliances and stuff. And then you went to collectibles. So, so you, is it like in, in time wise, is it faster doing sculpting by, by plastiline and doing the sea brush? What what's the what's the timeline between, between the two? Oh, this is this is an age old debate. Yeah. Um, but I I've started avoiding making too much comment on. But, okay, fair enough. But look, I think the important thing is some people are really, really good, like yeah. really good uh, sculptors in wax and clay. Yeah. And some people are really good digital models. Yeah. And at the end of the day, the question isn't who's faster. The question yeah. is um, who's creative input do you yeah. want on a particular project? So yeah. it should never be a question of uh, is it faster to go with one yeah. process or the other, more yeah. who do you want on a project, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, at whether there's a resource of the whole range of people that do all sorts of things. And it yeah. really depends on, um, you can pick and choose. You can pick and choose across the spectrum. Yeah. Uh, to give people work. I mean, for me, it's kind of whoever needs the work. To yeah. Do, to, you know? it's, it's, it's quite unique for, for yourself now who you, obviously you mastered the, the the clay and now you're learning this. So you a unique place to understand both both sides of the story. So which is good. So when you... I don't think I'll ever say I've mastered it. Yeah. Oh, you've, you've <laughs> don't, don't, don't be the most. <laughs> Jesus. I've arguably uh, got close enough to be good at it that I should yeah. have kept going, but yeah. I never seem to stick to, to it long enough. Um, but no, I I think having one foot in the traditional world definitely yeah. is uh, yeah, uh, It's very easy to make things very clean and tidy and perfect physically. 
Uh, yeah. So I'm constantly fighting against that. Even, okay. Uh, even when things need to be tidy, I'm still trying to make them a little wonky. You know, when you yeah. build a miniature, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you model that a miniature, you yeah. as try as you might, there's always going to be a little bit of irregularity yeah. that comes in. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's the same when you're making a costume and armor, you know, both sides are not going to mm. be exactly the same. You want that, that kind of hand, handmade look where it's a little bit off, but not enough where it doesn't look wonky, I guess. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. I mean, see, like, it's so, obviously, there, there, obviously there'll be a, a, a kind of like advice you give to people who start doing 3D stuff is to give the old school way a go first to so give you understanding of how things work. Would that be, be mm. the case? So with, before you jump onto ZBrush, just get some clay out, have a little play with that, so you kind yeah, of get get yeah, the gist of it. Sure. I would say so. I'd say yeah. there's some benefit to that. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about a very small range where that yeah. is applicable, yeah. but I think in sculpture it's probably fair, and I think in drawing and concept design, yeah, you know, drawing with pen and paper is, is mm. always the best way to start. Yeah. Um, so yeah, even dabbling occasionally, and that I think would yeah. help. Yeah, it's, it's always nice to do stuff by hand, but even like even now when I've got I bought myself an iPad, you know, but it's still mm. it, it's quite nice to get a pen and paper and just sit there and just draw. It's just nice, get nice little textile kind of feeling when you, you know, when you use yeah. stuff digitally. All you're doing, all you're feeling is just that the flat screen. You know, it's it's nice to feel with a paper, and use your hands every now and then. Yep. Yep. For sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, so obviously you also we work together on Thunderbirds. You guys, you were on there for like what three seasons, so still must be pretty cool to to be kind of like taking charge on that quite a nice, cool miniature project. Uh, Thunderbird. Yeah. So when you were on there, also you were one of the art directors, so it must be quite cool oh, to like yeah. take um, take charge of that project. I think technically I was lead model maker for the okay. first two seasons. I was an art director on season three. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the whole thing had such an informal structure. I never really yeah. knew what exactly I was doing on it. Yeah, uh, but that's, but that's, that's the was, fun of it, though. I was on it from the start. Oh, yeah. you call it fun. Um, <laughs> I was on it from the start to to at least the end of the miniature shoot. Yeah. Uh, so it was a long run. I think all in all, it was probably about six years. Wow, that's, that's a long run. I said, like, yeah. um, you, know, you, you guys must have learned so much you know, from the first one you did to the last one. There must be like some good learnings from there. I, I pretty much came to New Zealand for The Hobbit to work mm. on Minister for My Hobbit because I yeah. found the Minister in Lord of the Rings so inspiring. Yeah. Um, but when, when I got here, that had more or less fell through. Yeah. Uh, I think while I was in the sky, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so Richard asked me where, which department would you like to be in? Yeah. Uh, and I thought it was more, uh, um, what would you like to do? Not like he was actually going to give it to me. So I said, yeah, oh, yeah. I'll just try the sculpting department. And he put me in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I was in the sculpting department for a few years. Um, yeah. So getting onto Thunderbirds and Thunderbirds was great it gave me and the team the chance to do all the old school or a lot of the old school yep. visual effects tricks yeah. that um, that we all love and would have loved to have a hand at so it was it was like this last little pocket of retro yeah. filmmaking that yeah. was really to be part of yeah I remember you guys having all the, the massive piles of you know old computer parts and vacuum cleaners and Oh, there was so much stuff yeah, to... We, we had the full evolution from really almost making the model visual effects side of it as close to the way they would have done it in 1960, yeah. 1965, when the original was made, yeah. uh, with scratch building and found objects. Yeah. Um, uh, but as the show progressed, there was... Um, uh, more and more specific design, and we did like, but like what Ken was was saying, a lot more yeah. laser cutting with yeah. laser cut that hip, yeah. hip building, so you can yeah. a kit on in two D 
in vector files and then you cut yeah. it and build it. Yeah. Add yeah. little bits of scratch building onto that. Yeah. Um, and by the time we got to season three, we were starting to 3D print a lot more and move yeah. a lot more parts. Um, but we also, uh, the crew had, a lot of people moved on, but the crew got smaller and smaller. So by season yeah. three, yeah. the people that were still around were, um, you know, people like Fakim and Chris specifically yeah. that yeah. that could do everything, you know, yeah. the painting, yeah. the still guess, work, guess... the designing, the engineering, yeah. the rig. Yeah. Yeah. Chris is incredible with that. Oh, man. Did you yeah, have... Man. Chris on yeah, yesterday. we met Chris on yesterday. Yeah, ah, I totally missed that. Yeah, that's right. It's on. It's on. Uh, it's on YouTube and it's on my um, Instagram page too. So you, you know, that was good. That was a good one as well. Oh, you yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I won't say anything incriminating then. <laughs> nah, so. he won't mind. Oh. There's nothing he's heard <laughs> from you before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now yeah, I said like, uh, so obviously, when you find. You guys find yourself reusing the buildings and stuff for like obviously like next shot and stuff like that. So save yourself time. Oh yeah, we did loads of that. Uh, yeah. Almost uh, with the exception of the sets that ended up, you know, the Tracy Island sets that ended yeah. up in that space at Wafa. Yeah. Um, most of the what we called episodic sets that ended yeah. up uh, taking apart and reusing. Um, yeah. If someone is up pressing pain and wants to go and watch the show, you could definitely see recurring yeah. objects. Uh, there were some little things like, you know, the, the lemon squeezer that's yeah, 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 yeah. that we put in there as a homage, but yeah. this just turned out to be so versatile that we kept yeah. using it. Yeah, yeah. And dust and vacuum cleaners and... Oh, um, those, those dust and vacuum cleaners yeah. everywhere. Washing machine core bins, you know, yeah. those bins, all these cool shapes on it. Yeah, use yeah. those a lot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. We kept reusing stuff. I yeah. mean, it's a show, it's a TV show, so it's high turnaround, fast yeah. paced. Yeah. You almost don't have time to second guess yourself. Yeah. You just yeah, make it and what they get to shoot. Which is so, so, what would be one object that you, that you yeah. found, you know, oh, that is so cool that you never thought you'd be. You know, put into a miniature, so it's kind of like a. What gem do you find that that you use for one of your miniatures? Mm, I can't think of an object so much, but um, as a sculptor, I did like giving people the chance to sculpt little things and put them in there. Yeah. Um, now, there's a few that I did myself initially, but yeah, we had. Um, Antia was yeah. was with us on the team and um, she yeah. she loved the idea of doing sculptures so she did a few monuments, you know, she took the flying path and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she did um, pick, we did Piccadilly Square in yeah. in London for one episode and we got yeah. Antia to sculpt a bunch of little statues in there. Yeah. You know, so just I still remember you hand sculpted yeah. um Yep. statue work into the show was probably the yep. thing I enjoyed. That's not a specific object, but yeah, but yeah, still, I suppose you do those um, little little puck sculpture for Lady um, Penelope. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, mentioned. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about uh, Thunderbirds here, guys. By the way, yeah, and we yeah, like there was a, th th there was a model yep, kit. Um, uh, I think it was a Ravel model kit of a big. Uh, Bucket excavator, so it's this massive wheel yeah. with lots of um, bucket tools on it. Um, yeah. And that model kit, uh, we got probably the most love yeah. out of using over and over. Not as the model kit, just the part yeah. of it. The part, yeah. You know, I got told that uh, Thunderbird is the place where Gundam and swords uh, went to die. So that was. It's, it's like uh, the swords. You, you use whatever you find. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have to, you have to. I mean, like, the one set that I really enjoy watching when I go to, uh, looking at when you go to that space is the, um, that real rustic one of the, the layer of the bad guy when the spaceship came out. It, it, was, it was so kind of like rusty and, and mm. greasy, but it's such, so much like detail in that, you know, you guys use so many different, you know, different things to, 
overlay so the detail. Use the stuff obviously because it's fun, but yeah. you use the stuff with the engineering and the injection molding and the cost yeah. is yeah. informed. You get for free if you just slap pieces together. Yeah. Um, and there are people at West that have practically made a career out of yeah. kit passing to yeah. Dave Tremont, uh, yeah. being one of those people that, yeah. um, that do that amazingly well. Yeah. I mean, I remember seeing you guys using the, not the, the kit, but the, we call it the, the wiring that the kit comes together, using it for like ladder, ladders and for kind of like um, barriers around those kind of beams, which is quite cool. You guys oh, yeah. use, use everything. Nothing's wasted, pretty much. The, the thing that happens is your mind starts, yeah. your eyes start um, hunting for things at different scales and start yeah. weighing up how usable it could be at, at the various different scales. And we yeah. set out, I think initially we had a small number of scales we want to work to, yeah. uh, like 16 scale, you know, Barbie scale. Yeah. Uh, six scale, seven, yeah. seven, 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 I can't even remember now, but yeah. towards the end, of the, the, the shot dictates the, the scale. The scale, yeah. So we were all over the place, but anything could be a miniature. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, like, Things it was... Some of our kitchens, yeah. so they would end up in the bed. Yeah, it must be such a, um, it must be so hard to get your head around scale when you first started. That's what I find hard, I mean, like, even helping you out for that, like that month or so, just see you guys working with different scale, you know, just trying to get your head around, okay, this is good for making for this scale, then I have to make something smaller. You have to find something that looked the same, but it's not, you know. Because it's, because it's visual effects, uh, it, it just needs to look right. Your scale yeah. doesn't need to be necessarily empirically correct like it would yeah. be if you're building a miniature railway. Yeah. Um, we also used a lot of force perspectives, so you yeah. usually have three or four scales in a shot to make them look bigger because we don't yeah. have a miniature, you know, a, a whole landscape we can build yeah. in a studio so there's yeah. finite amount areas that you can build a miniature in. We have massive um, I think it was, I recall some of the bigger ones would have been like six by, six by nine meters, square meters, miniature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean you still have to fit the whole film crew in there. You have to fit all the lights. And yes, the with, camera with the cameras, and, yeah. Uh, and multiple sets as yeah. well. So, so we use a lot of force perspective to get it yeah. looking a lot easier. So what would be the most um, most challenging set when it when it comes to that? Was it like the the Tracy's house was being so enclosed, or was it something else? Challenging. Yeah, but to make sure you get the cameras in there, you get the, obviously like get all the get all not actors, get all your performance in there. So I know that Tracy's house, you guys have to move the move the the pool back and. We've seen pictures of, of Mona and Sophia inside the, the yeah. gaps. So. Probably in the early days where we, we, we were still figuring out what looked good to camera. Um, yeah. In the earlier episodes, you could sort of see the ages of the set a lot. Yeah. Um, so designing the miniature and the miniature shot in yeah. tandem yeah. maximum. But when we got better at that, like everything yeah. in season three was uh, for our from our side worked really yeah. well because it was a well designed shot and well yeah, designed yeah. miniatures. Yeah. Um, uh, generally, the hardest part was was just um, the turnaround on set, getting them done in time, getting yeah, them yeah. set. Yeah. That, that's always you, the toughest. Do you guys ever like painting on set before shot and doing last minute touches before? Always in between. In between as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually think um on over the years that I worked with uh especially with Chris and Martin, we yeah. had the system uh one person is at the monitor looking at the footage and one person yeah. is on set making yeah. adjustments and talk to each other and adjust yeah. fine tune. Yeah. Oh. Um 
Yeah. I guess that's the advantage of having such a, a, a tight, small team. You guys have your own role. You guys know what works for you, for you three, so you guys can work together so well to, if you have to, smash something out really quickly and still on the fly, on the set, you can you know, still fix stuff. So it must be good having two guys there and you know you can trust to, you know, to give you the right position, I guess. Uh, one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Who are those guys? Who? But, uh, cool. Yeah, no, it was good having man, having the right team makes all makes all yeah. the difference. Um, Big time. Uh, it helped to have worked with people for years, and Watson yeah. and I yeah. now have a business together, so yeah. we continue on that journey. Yeah, um, but that must be was quite a scary scary thought having business together. You yeah, with Watson. Really. Yeah, really <laughs> like <scary>. a world. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> um, Yep. Oh, so, yeah. So yeah, just there. Uh, is there is there one one episode that stuck in your mind that you like go, yeah, we nailed that. That was everything went pretty smoothly. No, nothing ever went smoothly. Um, oh, smoothish, smoothish. <laughs> yeah. Less, less, uh, less trouble. Uh, I think everything, we were very ambitious in season one, so there's some stuff that I would never do again. Uh, yeah. But it's cool. I just put a picture on Instagram of a city that we did. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, it's all, everything is in camera, even the light and the sex, the whole thing is yeah. in camera, which is cool. Yeah. And it's great that we yeah. had that chance, but there's no way I would ever think that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then uh, um, graduating up to the to the most extreme version of that was of course on Blade Runner 2049 yeah. yeah. um, the whole LAPD flying through the city oh yeah that, that was, was massive a, and mostly in camera as well I mean most of those buildings yeah. and the shots we did were actually miniatures, yeah. which was great. But um, it was the opportunity to live up to our highest ambition for yeah, doing man. miniatures. And it felt yeah. like a good conclusion in a way. Yeah, also, yeah, all the learning you guys had for the last few years doing Thunderbirds and really honed it down on, on yeah, Blade Runner. Yeah, Thunderbirds is a good training ground to. Yeah. Uh, to do Blade Runner for sure. And if it yeah. wasn't for Thunderbirds, we wouldn't have had the portfolio that we yeah. could put to that production to get that. Yeah, um, man. To, to get connected. Also, you guys had, you had pretty good mentor in Alex as well that helped you, helped you out. But he was, must, must be quite cool Alex, working uh, with some, yeah. The legend. Yeah, he must, man. He, must was, be, he was one of the people uh, like Danny Dick Warwick, Richard yeah. Taylor that I really yeah. wanted to work with, got yeah. to work with. Yeah. No, he he seemed like such a calm person, just you know, just pretty chill. We're just also, he's so you know what he's doing, I guess. Oh yeah, he, he's a veteran. You know, when you're yeah. working with someone with much experience, um, uh, like what Tim said, he has a cupboard with awards yeah. and Oscars in it. Yeah, it's just like throw off a duck's back and give him really. Yeah. Um, but just some deep, deep wealth of knowledge. Yeah, uh, is incredible to work with. That's awesome, man. That's, so obviously, like, when I remember I'm walking into you guys put um to the the warehouse and saw the massive uh, like a wasteland set. That was mm. must be pretty crazy to do. Obviously, like, also you have buildings. You know what buildings look like, but to make like a a wasteland kind of landscape was was it a challenging aspect of that, or you just kind of went for it? Um, I found that the big difference with doing these kind of miniatures for film is that yeah. it's not about the model making, it is a yeah. visual effect. But yeah. The way that the light bounces off objects and surfaces, the level of moisture you're trying to show, it, it's all in camera. Yeah. So having uh, Chris, Chris Mendes on our team yeah. um, meant that we could camera test little bits of stuff as we're building it. So we actually set up a tent in the workshop. Yeah. Uh, lighting, 
a bit of lighting set up and Chris and uh, Alex would go in there and test shoot little yep. parts, little mm. uh, v- versions, little vignettes of yeah. what this is going to look like and yeah. test it in there. Um, and it meant that to some extent you could almost scale back a little bit on the amount of detail you put on yeah. the message because you yeah, yeah. know what, what looks good to come up. Uh, so that was a really, really cool thing. Oh yeah, um, big time. It must be it must be a big help to have that knowledge there. So you do not not always spend too much time on the area that's not going to be seen or not going to be that high important. You can focus yeah, on your model makers, man. That, yeah. that, and I have to include myself here. We like yeah. detail. We like yes. doing it beautifully and tidily, but yeah. more often than not, it's not needed. Yeah, what's needed is a good shot design, good yeah. lighting, yeah, or painting, yeah. Um, I used to threaten my painters that right. if they didn't go faster, I would paint the... the <laughs> yourself. <myself. laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Mark will love that. Um, so, but was there a shot, though, that when they, they were shooting, you're like, oh, damn it, I wish I had more detail on that part, or they was really... Yes, um, everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, once you're shooting it, um, yeah. it's done. Uh, it's done. But you can learn from the um, Yeah. There's a lot of stuff in front of this that could have been better, but you know, it was the learning curve. Yeah, I guess it's um, one of those things where no, no one knows your mistake except for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, in yes. front of it, one of the things that was the thing for me uh, yes. initially, the, the first few sets looked real, they looked like real yes. places, and yeah. um, it didn't feel right for the kind of show that we were making. Yeah. Of course, all the characters were CGI. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and pretty sort of rushed CGI. So the yes. miniatures actually used to look more like miniature. So yeah, yeah. we spent a lot of time learning to make the miniature shots just slightly yeah. fantastical, slightly not yeah. real. Not, not quite real. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there were quite a few things. There was this one warehouse that I think Masa and I might have built together. Masa definitely worked yeah. on it. Uh, and that yeah. warehouse looked like the real thing. I've got pictures yeah. of it still there. Yeah. It yeah. just looks like the real place. Um, yeah. Which is cool. But then you could have just shot the yeah. footage in the real warehouse. So that doesn't yeah. really work. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess yeah. It, it's, it's hard try, you um, trying to marry the, your mind. Wanting want, want to build something that's real, then you have the the shots of the character and of the everything be not not cartoony but still quite abstract. So you're trying to like you know you're trying to mesh the two together, I guess. You're making a kids show that yeah. uses models that's yeah. made from household objects that's recycling yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I mean, we had this unique opportunity to make it so that kids could watch the show and actually see the junk that it's made from, recognize. A yeah. fork and a shot, or yeah. a lot of toothpicks and that sort of stuff, and that was yeah. worth doing that. Yes, then I remember seeing you guys did the did the latest thing for Weta, um, you and Mark and and Chris for the um, for the pen labyrinth for those um, the little miniature you guys built. That was quite cool. Oh uh, yeah, that was that was Chris and, yeah, and, and Mark too, and, well, yeah. and and Marky. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's like a cool little... Uh, was it like done over a day or a couple of days? How long did it take you guys to do that? Uh, I, I have to ask them. I think it was probably not more than a week's work. Yeah, uh, oh, no. I think Chris and Chris and Kathy and and Daniel Falconer actually took Clay home and made... <laughs> oh, yes, right. There's little, little things. Um, yeah. um, Mark, Mark and I made a miniature Hobbiton to put all the little hobbits. That's right. Yeah, we were there. I can't remember how long that took, but it was pretty quick. At least. Yeah. I think it would have been like three or four full days of work all in yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, Mark and I would just sort of sneak away and work yeah. on it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, in between our real job, making yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, 
Harry Stacky's or was it Stacky's or whatever? Yep. Yeah. No, those, those those were the fun video to watch because they just show. It's almost like it's a shame that is any any footage of behind the scene of um, you guys working on Thunderbirds? Can they put those up if anywhere? Uh, there must be a little bit of it. There, there's loads of footage shot. Yeah, yeah. The, the question these days because we don't live in an era of yeah. take a DVD yeah. home with extra features anymore. Yeah, uh, that stuff just ends up sitting on a server somewhere. We've got yeah. tons and tons. Of stuff. Yeah. There's no, there's no uh, incentive to bring it up and edit yeah. and put it. Yeah, I guess hopefully one day in the future they'll they'll release some of that kind of stuff to show some of the cool things you guys did. Cause like there's some pretty cool stuff in there. Yeah, yeah the the gold standard is the the extra features for the original Lord of the Rings. Yeah, uh, box set. Oh, yeah. where you just oh, yeah. oh my yeah, yeah I've, still, I've, still, I've still got it right there and actually I watched it a couple of nights ago which is quite cool and like and when you see how young everyone is when they when they film that which is quite funny as well <laughs> but yeah yeah man Dan, Dan and, 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 and Jamie as well and Richard and it's, it's just crazy yeah. so you see how young they were I'm like wow I'm not saying they're old <laughs> but I just say it's just a, such a big difference yeah yeah we I mean, like, um, did you get, did you ever saw any of the Lord of the Rings miniature in person, Stephen? Yes, um, they are all. A lot of them still survive. Yeah. Uh, the um, the towers, lots yeah. of Rivendell. Yeah. Um, but that's out of the still. So. Lots of of Gilead. Yeah. Uh, they're all stored in a warehouse uh, yeah. here in Wellington, and. Yeah. Um, in the process of making collectibles based yeah. on some of the environment. Oh, that's um, right. You have, you have to check them out, don't you? you yes. Go and have a look at it and take some measurements. Yeah. And so I think, um, I think they should be in a museum. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that I can see them more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, as I said, like, when the Return of the King came out, was, then they had an exhibition on a Tepapa. So, yeah, I remember, so, so I, I was saying before with the boys, the two things that really stuck in my mind was was the miniature of um, Minas Tirith and mm. of Bor- at Boromir in this boat. Those were the two things that, yeah. when I think of the exhibition, those are the two things. I remember seeing wow. obviously having the, the rock in the middle and you see all the little houses and all the little you know, trebuchet. It was, it was amazing yeah. sculpture. I was saying miniature, sorry. Yeah. Hopefully one day they'll they'll get re- restored and uh, been shown around everyone, so inspire the next generation. Sure. Of, uh, a lot of them are in pretty good shape, and they yeah. just need to dust them off and put them in <laughs> some good light. Oh and, yeah, uh, people. Actually, I remember a story you told me about um, Tracy Island and ants. You want to you want to explain that? Some some someone got using icy sugar to make snow, and there was ants or spiders everywhere. On, Tracy Island? So Tracy Island. Oh, so, um, so, or, 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 or say we guys use ice and sugar to make snow or something and it didn't work. There's ants everywhere. Or is um, so someone told me? I don't recall that specifically, but it sounds likely. Yeah. Um, we use a lot of um, glycerine and water that we yeah. put onto uh, the destroyed San Diego miniature yeah. for yeah. uh Bay yeah. And um, and we used some, uh, I think it was coconut husk uh, scatter material to just yeah. that it, it worked really well on camera to look like uh, like rubble. Okay. Um, rubble had these muddy pools in between that, oh, yeah, yeah. and that kind of sprouting is incredibly detailed and proliferous stalks of. Um, Algae. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, leave it for a few days and it started just growing these hills of beautiful white hair. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that we had to uh, scratch off or mulch over. Um, oh, bugger. You're good for something yeah, else, but it's not for that scene. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, like, as I said, like, just, just hearing that, it just showed that, you know, sometimes the stuff you guys use to get the effect you want. Is so, it's like a household object that none of us would think of. 
you know, so using the token that has for those kinds of things, is, that's pretty crazy. And that just comes with experience, I guess. You know, the more you do, the more you know what kind of stuff to use. Look, uh, the, the superpower we had at that point was, like I said, having Chris and a camera so we can put things on the line and have yeah. a look at it. Yeah. So you just bring in all sorts of junk that you found or, yeah. um, you know, the old Lord of the Rings trick of, um, opening up every new kind of tea bag to see what stuff oh, yeah. is inside. It's yeah. really good uh, yeah. autumn leaf wrapper material. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just camera testing. Oh, nice. Works. Cool. So let's let's move on to also use use collectibles for for a few years for winter. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so so which which I mean also you did quite a few like Gandalf and those kind of stuff. What would be the one that you really enjoy working on? Mm, oh, yeah, you, you, pick, pick, you, you pick a few, the one also like one that really come to come to your, your mind straight away when you when that's right. what I asked you. Um, I did collectibles in two sessions. I did uh, from two thousand and ten to yeah. two thousand thirteen. Yeah. I did a bunch that I sculpted in clay. Yeah. And then I came back uh after Thunderbirds for a bit and did another seven figures or so. Yeah. Um, the, the stuff we did for Dark Crystal was pretty cool because yeah. yeah. we got fans and really good photography of yeah. the puppets on. Yeah. And when you get a scan of a puppet, it basically looks like an empty costume. Yeah. Uh, detail is there, but the life of the character isn't there. So the yeah. sculpture is taking the scan and turning it into something that looks like a puppeteer is in there yeah. um, playing the character. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. I struggled with research for that because I didn't see Dark Crystal as a kid and yeah. I find the film uh, unwatchable. I'm, I'm the same. I'm um, like, I, I, I try to watch it. Yeah. Um, and this Caused a lot of consternation in the office. <laughs> so you, so you were dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, but the show is is amazing. Yeah, it's quite a show. show. I think the show would go down as one of those scenarios, in my opinion, where the the sequel outpaces the original. Oh wow. Um, so, so those those are pretty good, and yeah. and of course, collectibles is a way to. Uh, retrospectively work on Lord of the Rings, which is yeah. why we're all here, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, returning to Gandalf a few times. And, yeah. Uh, I did that Randall on the giant tree. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah remember um, that? Man, that that's, that, we were seeing that. that. That was pretty cool, pretty epic. From, from concept, you just couldn't believe that there are actually going to be people out there that would buy a meter yep. square collectible that's yep. mostly a tree yep. with oh. an elf in, in a yep. chair. Oh, we, we, we <laughs> did, you did add, um, add another elf down the bottom as a guard, you know, as, a, as extra. Yeah, we, we eventually, because there was so much space down there that could yeah. be utilized. It was yep. in there originally and it wasn't in there for a long time and then okay. for sort of last minute, uh, me and York yeah. uh, threw one together. Yeah. And uh, were you a part of Treebeard as well? The big Treebeard they made? The Treebeard and no, Pippin? No. And, uh, so that, that was the first big one I saw. I was like, holy smoke. Yeah. Who's, who's going to have room for this in their living room? And then you guys yeah, do you... It's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, um, mutually beneficial relationship that there are people out there that's willing to buy yeah. this stuff. Uh, yeah. And live presumably with family that's willing to live with a giant tree beard yeah. that dominates. Oh, that's in yeah. um, but that gives us the opportunity to make this nonsense. Oh, so yeah, it's cool. Yes, we it looked the detail, but like it must be so much fun, you know, just sculpting all the detail, putting all the bugs, all the snail, you know. Mm. Or, as, I say, as, a, as a model maker, you love detail, so you have the chance to finally, yeah. you know put them in the detail in there. Um, 
Yeah, that's one of the joys of working on collectibles. You can uh, really indulge in getting all the details yep. correct. Yeah. Uh, enhanced and just perfect. So there's little yeah. factors of very dense hours of dedicated focus. Yeah. In them. So yeah. Uh, so obviously, like you, you like you make a lot of collectibles. Is there some like stuff you do personal work for yourself now? Or you obviously you're doing freelance yeah. now, so you like probably yeah, get a bit I'm more time. So I don't really get to do collectibles anymore. Uh, at the yes. moment, but yeah. um, I sort of started making stuff for myself a bit more. Yeah. There's this amazing drawing, set of drawings that Mobius did for Jodorowsky's original Dune okay. uh, yeah. sign and storyboards. And yeah. um, I've been working on a little statue based on one of his designs. Yeah. Uh, it's just a little quick little pencil sketch yeah. uh, ink, ink sketch that I've yeah. been turning into a model. Uh, that's pretty fun. Yeah, so I'm just making things for myself now. Yeah, it must be nice to finally, I guess, have the time and have the, the that kind of the nice mindset to, you can kind of relax a bit and do your own thing rather than having like deadlines in the back of your mind, constantly having to... Yeah. think that, but yeah. I still have to deal a bit of that time. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't afford my own time necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then I can't put myself in to uh, yeah. to do a little bit, a little bit of that. Yeah, obviously. So you're still quite busy, even during lockdown. Still got like clients and deadline to to do. Oh yeah. Uh, if anything, it means I don't have to. I have an excuse not to drive to the office and just sit in the yeah. in yeah. the kitchen. <laughs> Fair enough, and, man. And, yeah, it, it's yeah. quite amazing how people on lockdown they're probably as busy as now than they were before because you cut out that four, half an hour, 40 minutes to an hour driving in, the, in and out. I guess you give more time to do it. One of, one of the more positive things, I guess, for a small percentage of us that come yeah. out of the whole uh, world situation is that we can do a lot more work. Mm. Uh, for studios uh, remotely from yeah. wherever you are. Yeah. But it also means that we're all competing with the world for that work. Yeah. You know, competing yeah. with Sanit Road for scratch the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, never. Nah, I mean, it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's been, I, mean, I said we're lucky because we are creative. So we never get bored. We always, you know, we all have hobbies, we have stuff that we can do, which is good. And it's, it's something that hopefully the rest of the world kind of like pick up a little hobby, pick up a pen and paper, pick up some clay, you know, and do some digital sculpting, you know. That's how, that's how you know, there's no room to be bored. You always have something something to do, I guess. I think we'd live in a better world if more people just made some art and stuff. Yeah. Uh, right, comments on YouTube. Yeah, big time, man. And it's like, I mean, like, Obviously, we're going down to level three today, which is obviously um, level four with takeaways. Uh, what 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 were your first your first takeaways? You gonna Uber Eats or deliver EC, Steve? Um, in my household, we're uh, big fans of the ladder. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, luckily, they've been continuing to make their bread. And we pick up their bread from the the little corner shop opposite oh, me. Nice, uh, that's um, good. Yeah, it'll probably be louder, I think. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I think like I said, like, it was it was like dying to get takeaway food. We got sick and tired of cooking at home <laughs> at the moment. But we'll yeah. see. Yeah, I said, yeah, yeah. It's been like I said, we go back to work tomorrow, kind of back to normal again. But it's been nice doing these kind of videos, just having a chat with friends mm -hmm. and hopefully a cheer. Uh, inspiration sure to, risk, to risk the world, yeah. You mean like, yeah, after this, I'm hoping to hopefully do like one once a week or something. I mean, like, hopefully, get get Warren on here. Imagine having Warren on here, that'd be a pretty awesome. Uh, Warren would Warren. be a pretty uh, talk about Warren. Also, you had all play with um, with Power Tire as well. That, that was, yeah, pretty, it was, and also, you look pretty much close to Kim and Warren as well. You guys have been doing a lot of stuff together as well, yeah. Well, 
week. Yeah. Um, in last lockdown, we actually shared our bubble with Tim and Warren. Yeah. Um, so Tim and I were in the studio. Yeah. Uh, tinkering on things. I was making collectibles so I could keep working, but um, yeah. we did a few. There's a neighborhood with Chris and Kathy even. Um, yeah, on Kathy. Yeah. December holiday, we we'd get together and have a little Christmas or holiday project yeah. and make a yeah. make a giant statue. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing stuff because you can make a statue uh, with very little effort that will yeah. last. A very very long time outside. Yeah, yeah. So we made a lot of garden stuff. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah a lot. Of, yeah. So do, do you guys do more like about that about yeah. that product? Is, it is yeah. incredible. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, like, you know, remember you guys doing those hobbit holes and you know, putting around Miramar? So there's hobbit holes everywhere, and doors everywhere. That was quite cool. Cool little yeah, project we, to do. Uh, last, last lockdown. Um, People would go for walks with their kids, yeah. uh, and the whole neighborhood put little teddy bears and toys in yeah. their windows. Oh yeah. So there's there's this little garden path down to the ocean, yeah. through a bit of forest near yeah. near to us here. Yeah. And Tim and I decided, and kids were making clearly kids and parents were making these little fairy houses and placing them on this garden path. Yeah. So we got together and we made. Um, we try to sort of up, <laughs> um, one up all of the local kids yeah, by yeah, making for yeah. um, detailed little fairy yeah. house. Yeah. Um, and we we actually basically cemented it in to the garden yeah. into oh, the yeah. forest so that it yeah. can't be stolen. You can yeah, see yeah. that someone might lift that. Yeah. Uh, Chris made this complicated frame of uh, rebar that. Oh, did he? <laughs> with, with, <laughs> That's awesome. uh, you'd have to pull the whole tree out to get it out. That's awesome. But um, I've had messages from from friends and from just local people that say yeah. they, they take it to go and look for it because it's hidden. Yeah, it's not super where it is, and the yeah. colors are painted so that it feels like it should be there. It doesn't feel like. Yeah. Some trash is thrown in from the ocean. Um, if no, you want to preserve cool. the look, yeah. It's, I mean, it's just nice is that people go out exercise just to see those kind of Easter eggs, you know. Like, oh, shake that out. That's cool. Yeah. You know, that's that's how it should be. It's a, it's just it's fun art and it's kind of like enriched, you know, especially for kids to, as well, just to know that's handmade, you know, and that could be done. Mm. You know, that's awesome. So you guys haven't played anything this year for this lockdown? Ah, uh, we're all well too busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess this lockdown is quite short. It's only like what a couple of weeks. Uh, like not like the last one's like months. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Tim is is learning ZBrush at the moment. So yeah, she you... told me about that. That you you challenged her to to learn ZBrush. Yep. Um, and um, yeah, I'm I just I'm drowning in freelance work at the moment, so I'm yeah. barely keeping up. <laughs> so the, <laughs> lockdown, the lockdowns are, are peripheral. Yeah, man, too much going on. Too much going on. I guess you have so much time. You want to do so many things as well. I, mean, I, I had that last lockdown. I had oh cool. I've got three months of lockdown, I'm going to learn this, learn that, learn this, learn that. I just got overwhelmed after a month just trying to do too much sometimes. The the never-ending risk is you think of something you want to do, a little piece yeah. of homage or fat art or yeah. something original. Yeah. And knowing you have the skill set to do it. Yeah, that's the hard part. It's an overwhelming temptation to make fat that yeah. you don't need, nobody else needs, but you want to do it. Yeah. Um, it's actually a, an interesting um, situation for all of us artists to be in because uh, that can be the basis on which you make important life and career choices. Is yeah. I wouldn't want to work on that cool thing. But yeah. it's not always a career, financial, yeah. um, or 
personal well-being choice. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the Depression passion sometimes yeah. can be quite sweet, but we do yeah. it anyway. Too. Yeah. Oh, sometimes it's nice, even though it's, it's hard work. You feel much more fulfilled after it's finished that you you worked on it, even though you probably got less sleep. Or yeah, yeah. I feel like you could probably feel quite fulfilled doing work that you get paid for. Oh yeah, that too. That that helps. <laughs> that definitely helps. We're like, you know, that's what I'm trying to learn at the moment. Yeah. That's, it's such a hard balance. So you're like, oh, that sounds so cool, but there's no budget. But it's cool. And you're like, oh, but uh, you're like trying to go, should mm. I, should I not? Uh, well, one yeah. day I'll learn, this, I'll learn to say no to those kind of people. One day I'll, I'll learn to say, nope, I can't do it. Rather, yeah, that sounds cool. Let's do it. Then they're like, oh, oh, bugger. <laughs> I, will. I think also it's important to recognize that when you've achieved arguably a life goal like like for us working on uh, Blade Runner yeah. that was the golden standard of ministers in a film was the original yeah. Blade Runner for us to yeah. have an entry into that in a, some small way mm. was really a big deal and yeah. what happens when when you feel like you've had that golden opportunity yeah. um, do you hunting for the next thing or do you say that was great let's try something yeah. else let's try yeah. um you know better work-life balance for example yeah. <laughs> what's that i don't understand what's, what's the meaning yeah. of that word <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're like yeah. As, as you know we're having a, a little one coming along soon so that's that's been my mm. struggle at the moment you know trying to not trying to say yes too much obviously once the baby's here i have to really tone down what what I do. So that's been that's been my kind of like um dilemma trying to pick and choose what I can do and what I have to drop out. So that's gonna be a fun couple of months figuring that out. That's gonna be a couple of months you say. That's gonna uh, be a couple of days. Oh really just just you know, figure it out. <laughs> so once once I figure it out then it'll be it'll be toned down obviously. But yeah, yeah. where where's right now I'm I'm almost like Trying to do as much as I can before I before I can, so <laughs> I'm trying to put everything in before I have to tone them down. Yep. But I see, like you know, I said people, look, there'll be there'll be plenty of um, baby costumes. That's for sure. That's a guarantee. So mm-hmm. I'll still be still be making mm-hmm. costume, maybe not for myself, but I'll be for the the baby instead. So you still get you know, still get your fix of me making costume, or just be miniature style costume rather than full size costume. Yeah, I can see how that's gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure this baby will, you know, have the the best dress baby. Yes or no? We'll see how we go. All right, um, man. I haven't. Yep. Uh, any questions? Yeah, um, it's no question. We were just like we, we just kind of be blabbering along. If you guys got any question? Definitely pop it in. I mean, like, we've been talking <laughs> solidly for an hour, <laughs> pretty much by ourselves. Also, we have Chris yeah. um, watching as well. Chris and Cassie are watching. I'm surprised that Joaquin haven't jumped on to, you know, ask you some um, no. hairy questions. Must be busy. Must be busy working. Yeah. Busy. I should be busy. I should be working right now. I'm trying to work while we talk, but it's difficult. Yeah, it's all good, man. I said, like, well, I said, it's, it's been an hour because normally uh, when I talk, it's for an hour anyway. So we've actually done pretty well. And it's been quite cool. People are getting a, um, kind of like a, uh, insight to you how you think when you're doing miniatures work when you're filming stuff for Blade Runner and for Thunderbirds because it's even for me a few things I was there for bits of Thunderbirds to hear you talk about all the other stuff which is really cool and especially for the, the in-camera shots you know thinking more about visual effects rather than you know uh, there's a question there how was Rise of Wolf Oh, Rise, Rise by, by Wolf. By Wolf, sorry. Rise by Wolf. I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? Um, yeah, that was great. Uh, I went home to visit family in Cape Town, South Africa. Yeah. And um, they, I, my friends and former colleagues from yeah. when I worked in the film industry there were all working on this new TV show. Um, yeah. Uh, being directed by Ridley Scott of all people. So I thought I'll pop in and say hi. Yeah. And they 
really much ask me if I wanted to work on the show. And I was like, no, I'm on holiday. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, they, and they came back and said, no, really, if you want to work on the show, uh, we'd yeah. love to have you. And I said, no, really, I'm on holiday. <laughs> as cool as it is. Um, but if you paid me this amount, I would consider it. And they, they said yes. So I ended up working Damn on it. it so <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was cool. It was actually it was one of the uh, highlights of my career, I would say. Um, oh, yeah. Fantastic team. This is Yaku uh, had a team of people. Yeah. Some of who was in film school with me. Oh wow! Um, back in the early 2000s, so it was a reunion because I've been working in New Zealand for the last ten years, working yeah. with. Them and a newer generation, and working on a Ridley Scott show, and oh yeah, man, it was a weird, cool production to be on. Oh, um, especially when you're going home for a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like I'm going, I'm coming back for a holiday. Not I certainly wasn't quite so keen on on <laughs> my idiotic plan to start working yeah. in a show. But yes. you don't turn down uh, working on a really short show. Oh, no, no uh, way. One of the coolest things about that show, um, while we're on it, uh, yeah. so I was basically a 3D and physical sculptor yeah. on that. Yeah. I did a bit of everything. So it was a good blend of where I'm at. Yeah. But um, the, the whole point of that show was they, they wanted every shot of, Raised by Wolves to look distinctly yeah. like Raised by Wolves. And these days, there's so much sci-fi out there yeah. that um, Ridley said that when he did Alien, you yeah. could look at any shot from Alien and you could tell it's Alien back then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because there's nothing else like it. Mm -hmm. uh, but when he made Alien Covenant, which is just two or three years before Raised by Wolves, yeah. Alien Covenant looked like everything else because everything looks like Alien yeah. or is inspired by Alien. So the yeah. point was raised by Wolf, a moderately low-budget TV show yeah. was to make it yeah. look... And I think we succeeded in making a weird, beautiful, bizarre show. They just wrapped us like a few weeks ago on season two. Oh, and nice. it. I was going to go back and do another season, but I've been stuck here. Yeah. Oh, Chris. Chris wrote a question. Let's see what's going on about Scale Street. Um, scale. So talk about Scale Street, I guess. Did Chris asked that question. Uh, I can't actually see. Oh, I can. I can scroll. Yeah. What are we going to do about Scale, Stephen? Okay, okay well, what's Scale? I know. So, you talking about Scale Studio or what kind of scale we're talking about? Uh, I'm sure he'll come up with a follow up question in a second. <laughs> All right. So, hope we go to the, the normal question. If you had unlimited budget, Stephen, what kind of film would you make? What kind of film would I make? Yeah. Um. Look, I, I, think, I think film is an incredibly important tool. It affects yeah. pop culture and general knowledge in really deep and fundamental ways. And yep. I feel like Carl Sagan. Do you know Carl Sagan? He's a I, heard, I heard the name. Yeah, I heard the name, but I can't, I can't yeah. picture the, the um, face. Um, he, he was really someone that took science in general, the, you know, the advancement of, of, of science where it was at at the time and brought it to um, people in an entertaining and understandable way. It's yeah. something that Neil deGrasse, deGrasse Tyson um, and Bill Nye and those guys are still doing. And I feel like art could have more of an influence in science communication. Yeah, yeah. So, if you ask me what specifically I would like to see in a film, I don't really know the answer to that. But I, I, okay. I wish I had more films that furthered 
um, a scientific understanding of the world. I mean, yep, if, yep, if we've yep. learned anything in the last year, we've learned that people are seriously deficient in knowledge of how science works. Oh yeah. yeah. So you're looking more like a documentary, yeah. kind of like teaching rather than like a film kind of thing. Really. Uh, yeah. I think um, not that Jurassic Park was uh, non-fiction, but yeah. it it furthered an interest in paleontology. There's more almost yeah. any paleontologist now that's in the uh, 40s would cite Jurassic Park as part of the reason they got into yeah, it. it. So that yeah, film yeah. furthered the interest and furthered the, okay. the area of paleontology yeah. in a yeah, fun big mean. way. I think yeah, yeah. we could see more things like that. We recently watched um, another Ridley Scott from The Martian. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. In The Martian, he gets himself out of, a, out of a sticky situation, not through the use of guns or violence yeah, or yeah, luck. Yeah. You know, it's like Harry Potter always finds a yeah. thing in the toilet that yeah. helps him save the day kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah. the Martin actually had, um, he had to use science and he problem solving to get out of the situation. I just think yeah. we can see more of that. Yeah. You know, so, 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 like so you, know, you mean, it's more, more grounded, more, more practical. I mean, it's, it's nice having fantasy movies, but sometimes it has something yeah. a bit more, a bit more, more real, more educational, you know. Yeah, that makes more, sense. More, more science education and entertainment. Uh, so yeah. if I had a lot of money, I'd put that into a project that did that. Well, um, well, 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 well I can just say you build a wine cellar. So we you, you done that as well if you had um, all the money in the world? If, if whatever this fantasy project is, um, does really well, then yeah. it could pay for a wine cellar later. <laughs> <laughs> a really big wine cellar. <laughs> I mean, Fair I enough. think the wine cellar comes with the understanding that you've got an actual house yeah, that yeah. has a cellar that has oh. wine in it. So, Imagine that you, yeah. you, you, if you live in an apartment between one bedroom to a wine cellar. <laughs> Done. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd probably put a higher value on a a library room. Oh, yeah. That could be a bit of an exhibition room. Yeah. You know, yeah, be quite nice. got mentally great statues from all the yeah. artists. Yeah, we have a those one like have a ladder going up as well to get to or, to, or the top shelf, those kind of library as big as that. Um, no, I think you should have them all within reach of uh, a seven year old. Okay, you know? fair enough. Yep, yep. Be able to pull them off and have a look at them yep, yep. easily. It's not like, not like those. Ladders. Yeah, not not like those massive like mu like library with the la with the leather they on <laughs> wheels. Fantasy library, right? So you yeah. just have a second level uh that you climb up and walk yeah. around. So ah, nice, nice. That's a good idea. That's an awesome <laughs> idea. They maybe yeah. have like we have like a a massive like dinosaur bone in the middle or something just hanging down. That'd be quite cool. Yeah, yeah. lots of dinosaur bones. Um, cast of dinosaur bones, they would oh, yeah. be amazing. Oh, yeah, big time, yeah. And they'll be way too yeah. expensive to get anyway. Also, man, that's been a, over an hour. That was good, good chatting. It went pretty fast. Um, thank you for joining yeah. me today. Uh, this is got nothing done for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you, oh, you, 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 you informed some people for over, over an hour how you work, you guys worked on, you know, how, how to, how to make ministry for a TV show, which yeah. probably nobody's ever had the chance to do again. So, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll see how you never know. I reckon like you know, filmmaking is like fashion. It goes round and round and yeah. round. Yeah, it will definitely come back around again where people want to go old school again. I mean, like even now, like there's a lot more effects, you know, physical effect than it used to be. Remember, like you know, five, ten years ago, everything's all digital, but it's kind of coming back a little bit. So you never know. Miniatures might make a, make a return in a few years' time, then you get a, a phone call. Steven, we need you and your team right now. <laughs> yeah. You never know, Maybe. man. You never say no. Also, man, we'll, we'll let you go, get back to work, and I'll be able to do some work myself too. Thanks for joining us today, Steven, and we'll catch you next time.
I'll see you yeah. around when, when, when lockdown's yeah. gone. We'll c- catch you walking around sometime. Yeah. yeah, good luck down the road. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot. It'll be fun tomorrow. See what it's like. That's for sure. Go on. Go right. well. Thank you. You too. See ya. You just put it again. Awesome, guys. Thank you for watching that. I hope you find that um, quite good and inform you guys of you know, how to do like filming for miniatures and stuff like that. Because even with me working on that, on trying to work at home for about a month, I didn't realize of all the extra stuff they had to do to to make those miniatures kind of camera ready. And yes, that was cool. So, once again, thank you for joining me for the last few days in these kind of like. Um, Instagram catch up with friends uh, obviously uh, we're going to go back to level 3 soon so it might be working but I'm going to try and keep doing these videos maybe once a week I'll let you guys know how that goes right once again thank you catch you later